morning. I'm John Brzezkowski with a note from UAF. With the coming of winter, people are getting more concerned about parking at the university. As a reminder, anyone affiliated with the university needs to purchase a parking decal. However, there are several areas designated on campus as non-decal parking. These areas do include the, the metered lots in the center of campus. Visitors may also park in the decal lots by purchasing a one-day parking permit for $3. If you have any questions or concerns about parking on the university, please call the UAF Department of Public Safety at 474-7721. With a note from UAF, I'm John Brzezkowski. Good day with the UAF Note, I'm John Brzezkowski. Well, the battle everybody's been waiting for is finally here. Your UAF Nana hockey team will be taking on their arch rivals, the UAA Seawolves, this weekend at the Carlson Center, 7.30 Friday night. The Nanooks then travel to Anchorage to take on the Seawolves on their home ice for a Saturday night game. Nanooks are looking to overcome last year's 0-2-2 season against the Seawolves. This weekend's games are the only two matchups between the teams. For ticket information, please call the Carlson Center at 451-8258. With UAF Note, I'm John Brzezkowski. With another UAF note, I'm Scott McCrae. UAF will host a free university day for high school students and their parents this Saturday. Events include tours of the campus as well as meetings with the deans in the students' academic area of interest. Presentations will also be given on how to register for courses at UAF, as well as the different services that are available to students. In addition, students will be treated to a free lunch at the Lola Tilly Commons, as well as free admission to that evening's Nanooks hockey game. Students from high schools across Alaska are expected to participate, as well as students from the rural communities. For more information, call 474-7822. This has been Scott McRae with another UAF Note. Good day with another UAF note, I'm John Brzezkowski. The Campus Safety Task Force has presented its final report. Here to give an update on the committee's work is UAF Chancellor Joan Wadlow. The final report of the Safety Task Force concludes that UAF is a safer place than it used to be, and that's good. The final report also says that we must take additional actions to make many more people aware of safety needs and many more groups aware of it. I'm determined that this will happen. This week we found that we need additional lighting and places on campus that will occur. We will conduct a safety analysis before we start on our repairs in connection with code correction and deferred maintenance problems. The task force said that we ought to have a permanent oversight of safety and so I've assigned this job to an existing committee, an entity which is uh, headed by Charlie Dexter and they're already working. We will complete as soon as possible our comprehensive review of alcohol and we will take action. I'm John Brzezkowski with another UAF Note.
Good day, I'm John Wojcikowski with another UAF Note. If a night of comedy is what you're looking for, then Theatre UAF has the play for you. The theatrical farce Noises Off opens November 18th. The play takes a hilarious look at how theatre works or doesn't work. The play was directed by Dean of College of Liberal Arts, Gordon Hedahl. Tickets are on sale at Hoyt's Music, Cars Foodland, and the Theatre UAF box office. For more information, contact the Theatre UAF box office at 474-7751. This has been John Brzezkowski with another UAF Note. With another note from UAF, I'm Scott McRae. In less than 18 months, a new Science Operations Center is scheduled to be online at UAF. The facility will be located at the Polker Flat Research Range, located 33 miles north of Fairbanks. The center is part of a $20 million modernization project funded through Congress by NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. The Operations Center was dedicated to T. Neal Davis, the first director of the research range. Other improvements will include a rocket launcher enclosure and rocket assembly buildings. This has been Scott McRae with another note from UAF. With another note from UAF, I'm Scott McRae. Winter is a time for meeting family and friends and taking part in festivities. With the holiday spirit in mind, the University of Alaska Museum is featuring a two-day celebration on Friday, December 3rd from noon to 6 p.m. and Saturday, December 4th from noon to 5 p.m. The focus of the event, Gatherings North, is Alaskan Native art and culture. Featured in the event will be Alaskan artists demonstrating beadwork, skin sewing, basket weaving, and carving. Also included in the event will be fiddlers, Alaskan Native storytellers, and the UAF dancers will be performing Alaskan Native dances. There's something for everyone at Gatherings North. The holiday celebration is the museum's way of saying thank you to the Fairbanks community for all of its support over the year. Admission to the museum and to all the events is free. This has been Scott McRae with another note from UAF. With another UAF note, I'm Scott McRae. Well, if you're still unsure what to get people for Christmas this year, then UAF has some great gift ideas for you. The University of Alaska Museum is having its annual holiday celebration this weekend with a 10% discount on all purchases. There will also be a book reading and book signing by author Claire Rudolph Murphy, author of the new children's book, The Prince and the Salmon People. The Alumni Relations Office is having a 10% sale on items there. Items include anniversary pins, mugs, t-shirts, and notepads. And the University of Alaska Bookstore has a wide range of items from clothing to books. And for the avid reader, try the University of Alaska Press. They have publications there on topics such as nature, history, art, and science. This has been Scott McRae with another UAF Note. Have a great holiday season.
good day with another UAF note. I'm John Berchikowski. With the holiday season quickly approaching, UAF is preparing for its winter closure, which will be December 23rd to January 2nd this year. During the winter closure, UAF will be saving money by shutting off lights and lowering building temperatures. Custodial services, snow removal, and other maintenance will also be at holiday levels. December 23rd, 24th, and 30th and 31st will be considered university holidays. Last year, during its winter closure, the university saved over a quarter of a million dollars. With another UAF Note, I'm John Berjikowski. With another note from UAF, I'm Scott McRae. Jack Keating from the University of Washington in Seattle began his new job as provost at UAF this week. Keating met in an informal coffee hour with UAF students, staff, and faculty in the Wood Center on Wednesday. Well, I'm happy to be here at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. It's a wonderful opportunity to come join the scholarly and academic communities. And I look forward to uh, the position of provost, which is an attempt to bring together both the teaching and the research elements of the university in one office. The wonderful faculty and the enthusiastic students you have here will make my time here, I'm sure, one of exceptional busyness as well as exceptional pleasure. I hope I can contribute to the community that is here in Fairbanks, and I will do my very best to be open both to the students and faculty and staff, as well as the community at large, because a major research university like the University of Alaska Fairbanks has a real commitment to serve the university. The provost position replaces two former vice chancellor jobs at UAF. Chancellor Joan Wadlow says streamlining at the top will result in administrative cost savings. The provost is responsible for overseeing research activities and academic affairs at UAF. With another note from UAF, I'm Scott McRae. With another note from UAF, I'm Scott McRae. A task force to investigate alcohol use and substance abuse at UAF has been formed. A comprehensive review of UAF's alcohol policy was recommended by two separate groups that were set up to review safety and security at UAF. The Alcohol Use and Substance Abuse Task Force will review programs and policies at UAF to help make recommendations to combat alcohol use and substance abuse. Four specific areas have been highlighted for review. They include institutional philosophy and commitment, prevention and education, policies and enforcement, and treatment. The task force is being co-chaired by Mike Sfrega, Student Services Coordinator at UAF. Other members of the 17-person committee include student staff and faculty representatives. This has been Scott McRae with another note from UAF.
With a UAF note, I'm Scott McRae. UAF recently completed its Northern Momentum 21st Century Campaign, raising $12.1 million and surpassing its $10 million goal. The close of the campaign was celebrated at a reception last Thursday at the University of Alaska Museum. These monies will help us support scholarships, they'll help us support programs, they'll help us move UAF into the 21st century, and we'll march boldly and confidently. And I think the major part of its success is due to the, basically the spirit of the people of Alaska. The campaign was UAF's first full-scale fundraising effort. This has been Scott McRae with a UAF Note. With another UAF note, I'm Scott McRae. This year marks the 25th anniversary for World Student Services at UAF. Since 1969, the department has helped Alaska's native and rural students make the transition from village life to college life. RSS has been committed to enhancing students' educational opportunities through academic advising and personal counseling. Since its early years, thousands of students have used RSS, and as up to as many as 500 a day have come through RSS doors. In addition to counseling, RSS also provides cultural opportunities for students through support of the Elders in Residence program and the Festival of Native Arts. This grand celebration will be held this fall with the Native Summit. This has been Scott McRae with a UAF Note. With a UAF note, I'm Scott McRae. The UAF Lee H. Salisbury Theater will be holding a special gala renaming ceremony Saturday, March 19th at 8.15 p.m. The ceremony will be held to honor Salisbury, who is the founder of the UAF Theater Department. Included in the ceremony will be a variety show featuring some of the very best of Fairbanks performing artists. Also honored at the ceremony will be UAF Theater supporters who participated in the Buy a Seat Drive, a fundraiser that was held to help refurbish the theater. Tickets for the ceremony are $25 for adults and $15 for students and children. UAF is proud to name its theater after Salisbury. I would like you to come help pay tribute to an extraordinary man. This has been Scott McRae with a UAF Note. With another UAF note, I'm Scott McRae. The doors are finally open on UAF's new Student Recreation Center. The new facility contains three basketball courts, aerobics area, climbing wall, support facilities such as locker rooms and restrooms, a running track, and a new weight area with state-of-the-art equipment such as Stairmasters, rowing machines, and stationary bicycles. The general public can come check out the rec center by obtaining memberships or daily passes either at the Patty Gym or the rec center. This has been Scott McRae with another UAF Note.
With a UAF note, I'm Scott McRae. Some say if you dig a hole deep enough, you can dig all the way to China. A drilling team from the UAF Polar Ice Coin Office didn't quite get that far, but they did drill deep enough to make a scientific discovery. This week's journal for the American Association for the Advancement of Science highlights UAF's work. The Polar Ice Coin Office, or PICO, drilled nearly two miles through ancient Greenland ice last July, making it the longest environmental drilling record in history. The ice core recovered from the drilling helped reveal climatic changes that have occurred over the past two ice ages. Scientists say that predicting climatic changes in the future is linked to the ancient ice. The results of the work were published in the March 25th issue of Science Magazine, just one of many articles recently published on PICO team's work in Greenland. This has been Scott McRae with a UAF note. With a note from UAF, I'm Scott McRae. The board of directors of the recently established Rasmussen Fisheries Research Center held its first meeting at Fairbanks recently. The group will chart the future of the center. The focus will be on coordinating research that addresses the problems facing Alaska's fisheries. Establishment of the center was due to a $1 million donation from former UAF regent Elmer Rasmussen. The uh, well, importance of fisheries to the state of Alaska is that it is the largest uh, employer of personnel throughout the whole state more than any other business and when you talk about their employment you're really talking about the economic and social structure because there are all kinds of communities that uh, depend upon fisheries for their livelihood and um, so therefore it's extremely important to the state. Alaska's coastline is the longest of the state. UAF is responsible for administering the fisheries programs within the university system. Facilities and personnel are located at 11 different coastal sites. As Alaska's second largest industry after oil, making sure fisheries has the best science has to offer is vital to the economic future of the state. This has been Scott McRae with a note from UAF. With a note from UAF, I'm Scott McRae. Theater UAF wraps up its 93-94 season with a trip back to decadent Berlin in pre-Nazi Germany in the rousing musical Cabaret. The play runs from April 7th to 24th at the UAF Lee H. Salisbury Theater. The story follows the final days of Berlin just before the establishment of Nazi Germany. The play is set in a steamy nightclub when the men and women are caught up in a whirlwind of denial and abandoned innocence. The plot is inspired by the infamous nightclubs of 30s Germany. The play is directed and choreographed by U Theater UAF's 1994 guest artist, Sonny Smith. For information on showtimes or tickets, call Theater UAF at 474-7751. This has been Scott McRae with a note from UAF. With a note from UAF, I'm Scott McRae. The public is invited to attend a free science fair at the UAF Woods Center on Saturday, April 23rd from noon to 5 p.m. The event is being sponsored by UAF's College of Natural Science. 
Featured at the event will be exhibits, demonstrations, and displays by the departments of geology, chemistry, and physics. Hands-on experiments will be available for children as young as five. The organizers of the event promise lots of experiments, as well as some you can try at home. Some of the demonstrations include how to make a battery out of a lemon, a superconductor experiment, and a favorite for the kids, how to make slime. For more information, contact UAF's Department of Chemistry at 474-7525. This has been Scott McRae with a note from UAF. With a note from UAF, I'm Scott McRae. Anne Frank in the World, an exhibit chronicling the rise of Nazism and Jewish persecution in Germany from 1929 to 1945, will be on display at the UAF Fine Arts Gallery on April 28th. The exhibit features photos of the Franks, a Jewish family that hid for two years in a small one-room attic apartment to avoid being sent to Nazi concentration camps. Also included in the exhibit will be historical news photos of the time. The exhibit is part of a series of events for the month of April that focus on racism and discrimination. Other events include an original musical drama written by UAF music and theater instructor Ravana Martin titled The 614th Commandment. The show runs on April 28th at 8 p.m. at the Charles Davis Concert Hall. The events are being supported by the University President Special Projects Fund, the Office of the Provost, and Human Unkind, Humankind, a local nonprofit organization. This has been Scott McRae with a note from UAF. With a note from UAF, I'm Scott McRae. The University of Alaska Museum and the World Eskimo Indian Olympics, or WEO, have joined forces to provide a unique experience for Alaskans and visitors, aurora watching in the summer. A temporary dome being built next to the museum will be used for WEO's Northern Inua show, as well as for daily aurora presentations. Dubbed Northern Interpretations, the summer program will feature slide and video presentations of the Northern Lights. Also included in the program will be Northern Inua, a cultural performance based on traditional dance, storytelling, and athletic presentations. The performances are scheduled to begin Memorial Day weekend. This has been Scott McRae with a note from UAF. With a note from UAF, I'm Scott McRae. UAF will celebrate its 72nd commencement exercises Sunday, May 8th at 1.30 p.m. at the UAF Patty Center. The university expects to confer 964 degrees and certificates this spring, with 550 students participating in the actual ceremony. The procession begins at 1.15 p.m. and will be led again this year by Eskimo dancers playing a traditional Yupik entrance song. Chancellor Joan Wadlow will preside over this year's commencement. The commencement speech will be given by pioneering Arctic researcher Maxwell Britton, who will also receive an honorary degree in science. Graduating senior Jolene John, a Yupik Eskimo from Tuksuk Bay, will deliver this year's student address. This has been Scott McRae with a note from UAF. Have a great summer. <laughs>